All right, so this is your lab report for alum. And what I would like for that is page one. I want the lab rubric for the alum lab report. You can find that on Canvas in the file. And then if you look at page two, that's the lab report form. Again, this can be found in the chemistry lab site where you found the procedure. And then pages three on, I want the calculations. For the alum lab, I want all of the calculations. So every calculation you do, I want to see it. And then the very last page, I just want the carbon copy of your data only. So check your email or your, your syllabus to know when that lab report is due. So now let's go to the board so that you can look to see the lab report form. Because there's a couple things I want you to change on the report form. So in this area right here, you will write the overall balanced equation, which I'm going to go over in just a moment. You'll attach the work for this on that separate sheet that includes your calculation. And then here, I want you to X this section out because your bottom line, you're going to find the limiting reactant. And by doing that, you're going to do this calculation. So I, I want you to X out this find the number of moles you're adding. Then at the bottom, I want to talk a little bit about this. The molecular mass of alum here, that is going to be the molar mass of the alum that you've produced. Here you have the moles of alum theoretical. The theoretical is always based on the limiting reactant. So you have to find the limiting reactant before you can find the theoretical amount of moles. That's the maximum amount of alum that you can find. Then you do a conversion to mass through your periodic table, you just, you gotta use that. And then you have the actual mass of alum. That's what you ended with in the lab. So that's what you massed out the white powder that you massed out at the very end. That's your actual mass of alum. That was on the weight, the watch glass. And then your percent yield here. <clears throat> and notice here, it says with good technique, this reaction gives about 98% yield. Now you are developing chemists, so I don't expect you to have a 98% yield, so don't sweat it. You could have greater than 98%, that means that your sample was wet. I've seen that. I've seen as low as 40%. It just means that you lost some of your sample through the poor reaction. I am not grading, personally, I am not grading on whether you get 98% yield. I am grading your calculations and your understanding of how you find limiting reactants. So don't sweat your percent yield, just watch your calculations. <clears throat> All right, so let's come to the board where we've got some written work. <clears throat> so that first part that wants you to come up with this overall reaction. Now remember, you ran the reaction in four steps. You started with aluminum and you reacted it with potassium hydroxide. It started getting bubbly. That produced the black sooty stuff at the end. And bottom line, you have four reactions. Now I've only written two, so you'll need to write out all four. Make sure you have the phase labels with them. And one of the things that you'll want to do to, in order to come up with that final reaction is to go through anything that is on the right-hand side or the product side that is also on the left-hand side or the reactant side that is in the same phase and in the same chemical compound you can get rid of. So for example, you'll notice in the first reaction, we have a yield of two moles of potassium and aluminum hydroxide in aqueous form. And you'll notice over here in the reactant part, we also have two moles of potassium and aluminum hydroxide in the aqueous form because we utilized it the second step. Because that chemical is on both the products and reactant in the same phase, I can get rid of it, and it doesn't show up in my overall reaction. <clears throat> you will continue with that process all the way through, and then at the end, you should get this balanced chemical equation all the way through. Now notice this product here that includes 12 hydrates or 12 waters, this is your alum. The two is only there to balance the equation. This is the formula for alum that you produce. Just keep that in the back of your mind. Now, the goal of this lab is twofold. First part is which one of these, aluminum, potassium hydroxide, or sulfuric acid, is your limiting reactant? That's your goal. And then we're going to use that information to find our percent yield. Now, remember, actual yield is what you masked out in the experiment. And theoretical yield is going to be based on the maximum amount 
that you could have produced. And that is always based, always, always, always based on your limiting reactant. So we gotta find limiting reactant before we can find particulate. So in lab, you maxed out anywhere from 0.4 to 0.6. So I'm just gonna make up a math. <clears throat> Let's say I start with 0.25 2 grams of aluminum. Now, people teach this different ways. One of the ways I approach it is whichever one of these reactants limits the amount of product made, that's your limiting reactant. So I've got to relate aluminum, potassium hydroxide, sulfuric acid to aluminum. And we can see this beautiful balanced equation that allows me to do that. And we'll notice also that for every two moles of aluminum, two moles of alum are produced. So that means I can't stay in mass units, I've got to convert. So that first conversion is a periodic table conversion. So I go to the periodic table and I find that 26.98 grams of aluminum per mole of aluminum. And again, I cannot stop there because I need to know how much alum is produced from this. So the next step is to use my balanced chemical equation conversion, and I can see that for every two moles of aluminum, I produce two moles of alum. Now when I end here, I will then have a number of moles of alum. Now notice, that's not aluminum, that's alum, that product right there. So that's one step. Now I've got to go back to my potassium hydroxide and I think in the lab it was 1.4 molar. I'm gonna write it in terms of moles per liter. I'm gonna slide over here and make a notation. Molarity or molar is equal to moles per volume or moles per liter. So we're gonna use this in order to figure out the number of moles of potassium hydroxide. That's why I wrote the 1.4 moles per liter. And I'm just gonna double check. Yes, we did use 25 mils, but again, I have to be in liters. <clears throat> your, your volume's probably gonna be a little different. So if I use exactly 25, I would write that out. And then lo and behold, I'll get to moles of potassium hydroxide. Now, I cannot stop there because again, I need to find out how much potassium hydroxide what did it actually produce for alum? So I gotta go all the way to moles of alum. I need to know how much alum was produced from this amount. The sulfuric acid is the same way. You started, I believe, with nine molar. You had roughly 10 mils, you gotta convert that. But to bottom line, you need to also get that to moles of sulfuric acid. And again, you're not done. You've gotta go all the way to moles of alum. Once you get to that point and you have your values, now you can figure out which one's limiting reactant. Which one of the three, aluminum, potassium hydroxide, or sulfuric acid, produce the least amount of alum? Whichever one that is, that is your limiting reactant, and you will circle your limiting reactant. Also, whichever one produces the least amount, that one tells you what the moles of theoretical alum are produced. So whichever one produces the least amount is the limiting reactant, and it also is telling you what the theoretical yield is. And then you can finish out your lab report from there. But that should get you started on your calculations and understanding of limiting reactants.